Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Recording here. Now, I think it's safe to say that we all know by now that MIDI drums and amp sims are more than good enough when it comes to genres of music like gen, technical death metal, pretty much any genre of metal or rock where the genre calls for super polished, almost fake sounding production. But the question is, are MIDI drums and amp sims good enough to be used on productions that maybe need to sound a little more natural, a little more organic, like actual human beings performing together on a recording. In other words, can you get away with something like Easy Drummer and a free amp sim and produce a result that sounds like an actual real band? Well, the truth is, yes, you definitely can. You just have to know how to do it. It takes a little more work, a little more attention to detail, but it's 1 million percent possible. Now in the Frightbox Mix Crypt, which is my private mixing community, there is a member that's absolutely crushing it in this department. His name is Mike Vasquez and his productions have been impressing me to the point where I decided to have him on the channel so he could share with you his exact process for producing naturalistic, super organic sounding results with MIDI drums and amp sims in an extremely limited, simple home studio environment. Now in this video, Mike is gonna share his story, which I find to be super inspiring. Not only that, but we have a lot in common. Things like recording out of big studios, being ripped off, being completely unhappy with the results, and finally deciding to take matters into our own hands and record our own music with the simple tools that we have at our disposal. In other words, producing better sounding results out of our home studios with MIDI drums and amp sims than out of bigger studios with pro producers utilizing a crazy live room and a bunch of gear and again, receiving a product that sucks. Now in the Frightbox Mix Crypt, we share music with each other that we're working on. And again, I'm so impressed at Mike's that I want you to learn more about his process. So without any further ado, let's check out Mike's story. What's up everybody? You definitely don't know who I am. So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mike. Uh, if you are subscribed to this channel or you frequently check in, you are probably a musician, a songwriter, you want to start recording, maybe you record a little bit, maybe you want to start, you're not sure if I should do it or where to begin. That's how I started also. Um, but before I continue, let me just say I am nobody special. Uh, I am pretty much a beginner and I feel like I'm making some good progress with the help of some of my mentors, we'll get into all that later. But um, yeah, I got no fancy tips, no fancy tricks to offer you. I'm just a guy with two ears. Uh, I do most of everything by feel, by what I hear. And um, yeah, before I get into all that, let me give you a little background about myself. So I started my first band around 2005-ish. Um, back then, being a rock star was still somewhat a thing. So, you know, of course, we wanted to tour, get signed, travel the world, do all that. And we wrote some songs and we just started playing countless shows, show after show after show, before we even thought about recording anything. And I'd say maybe around 2007, 2008 ish, we uh, recorded, went to a, we went to a studio to record. And spent a lot of money. The guy wanted cash only, which that's a red flag. Um, and once we got everything recorded, he decided to extort us and say, hey, I'm not going to give you the, your songs unless you pay me this amount of money. And it was a crazy amount of money. So we never got the album finished. We never received it. It was a horror story. That alone almost made me want to quit. So that band fell apart because of that. So I started another band as a drummer, and uh, that band had a little bit of, I'd, I'd call it some success, you know, played a ton of shows. We actually recorded and we got that EP done, but that was another nightmare experience. I don't even want to get into that, but it was just, it was enough to where I was like, man, I got to figure something out. And I was always the guy in the band that would record all the demos, would, you know, I didn't know nothing about recording, still don't. But I, I used to just record, I started with a cassette Tascam, I think it was an eight track. I went from that, I went on to a Zoom R24. And it's like, I just thought recording was pressing buttons and that's what you did. And I always grew up uh, watching all my favorite bands, the making of their albums, and you just see fancy gear everywhere. And it makes you feel like, man, unless I have all that gear, I will never be able to make something that sounds decent. And not even just having the gear to learn all that stuff. And, 
you know, it, it just it just was very overwhelming. So I just always thought this is as good as it's going to get just what I do making these little demos. And after the band uh, that I played drums in, I decided I no longer wanted to do that. I decided I got to start making music for myself. What can I do? How can I how can I learn to record? So I just started recording. That's what I did. I just started the first kind of songs that I made sounded like this that right there will not cut it that was not good enough for me at the time so i decided what can i do to learn oh youtube that's how everybody learns everything now so you type in almost anything that you want to learn recording related and bobby torres fright box comes up so I just started diving head first, learning as much as I could. And I took that song, went from what you heard, and turned it into this. That's still not the greatest sound in the world, but is definitely an improvement. Looking back now, I could definitely top that. I know I could. And I wish I could go back in time, but I can't. But the good thing about getting your music done and just releasing it, it's a moment in time that you can go back and look, that's where I was in that year. And this is where I am now. After releasing that, I was like, you know what? How can I get better? And writing little songs here or there and just recording them myself, that was definitely helping me improve, but I needed more. I needed more. And just like if you want to uh, go to the gym, you're not going to go there one day, lift a couple weights, and hey, I'm buff. Yeah, you know, that's not how it works. You need reps. You need time. You need more. You just need to keep doing it over and over and over. And that's where the Frightbox Mix Crip came in. And I was like, hey, let me see what this is about. I joined, and there is a ton of music there now you can just work on your craft just get in the reps mixing and mixing and all different types of sounds different songs different styles that you could work with and just doing that over and over i start i'm starting to develop my ear now and i'm still nowhere near where i'm gonna get i'm still a beginner um i could definitely say that things are heading in the right direction. Let me show you, uh, let me show you what I use. All right guys, this is it. This is my space that I do what I do in. There is nothing special about this. In fact, I don't even consider this a space. I have a wall inside of my house. I have a wall. This is it, right here. So what I use here is Reaper. I don't know if you can see that. I'm using Reaper. I got some cheap speakers that I think they cost $100, which I will get into that in a minute. I got my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. I believe that's the second generation. I got my PB Triple X, which is my go-to guitar, guitar amp. These are the pedals that I mostly use. Check that out. And I go into this Torpedo Captor and that's what I do for guitars. But yeah, this is it. Oh, check out uh, check out my vocal my vocal booth. Literally just a space by the closet. It's just some soundproof curtains. There's my vocal booth. There's my microphone. Got an SM7B going, but literally just a little space. This is where I cut my vocals. Now that you can see that I have nothing special going on here at all, let me talk to you about my process really quick. As far as guitars go, one thing I've learned in the crypt is to just get it right at the source. I'm using Reaper. There's nothing fancy. There's no type of whatever. I'm using a lot of stock pl uh, plugins. I'm using the, for EQ, I'm using the stock plugin. The compressor, I'm using stock. Um, as far as drums go, I have an Alesis DM10 kit that I hook up. Uh, and I get MIDI from that. I, I really like MIDI drums. I'm using right now, one of my go-tos is the Tune Track Easy Drummer. I believe it's the Made of Metal Easy X by Colin Richardson. 
I'm using that. Uh, if I have to go with AmSims, I like the uh, STL Tones Tone Hub, but there is a sleeper amp sim that I'm going to tell you that I really love using, and it looks like this. As far as drums go, some people like to hate on MIDI drums. I love real drums, um, but if you're going to use MIDI, I think they are awesome. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of tips and little tricks that you can look online and find out how to make them sound pretty much like the real deal, you know? One thing that I like doing is I like being very, very detailed with my drums, with my MIDI drums, because I myself am a drummer. I know how drummers play for the most part. I pretty much uh, do what I would do in real life. Like, let's say I'm doing a roll. I know my left hand is a little bit weaker, so that will ch I'll change the velocities to match that, or I'll know that if I'm doing a faster part with my feet, it might not be as as powerful, it might be a little lighter on the feet, you know, so I'll adjust the velocities to that. Just make sure you keep the dynamics with drums and make sure, number one, the drums are not perfect. Unless you're going for that, of course. But if you want that more realistic thing, you don't want it to be perfect. Little tiny mistakes, that's human. We aren't robots. So yeah, as far as guitars, I like to go my PB Triple X, into the you know decimator possibly my grind pedal but I will go straight into the torpedo torpedo captor and that will go straight into my interface and I load up my wall of sounds plugin that's what I like using you could use anything but that's what I like to use now you're probably asking yourself what have you done lately why are you here I've recently worked with a band named feeding the archons and it sounds a little like this. Not too bad, right? Like I said, I have not been doing this very long at all. I'm just using my ears. Um, but it just goes to show from that first demo that you heard how much you can improve just by getting the reps in, just by doing it, just by exper experimenting, not being afraid to try something, and then just getting it out there. Let it, let it just go, let it go out in the world. What I did for the Feeding the Archons, um, we blended a couple different amps. We blended my PV XXX, uh, an EVH 5153, I believe, that's what it's called, and then also an HM2 pedal. So there's like multiple tracks going on, just blended, try to find the right blend, EQing, the, you know, take what I like from each element and use what I think was the best about that. I like the low end of the EVH, I liked uh, the mid range of the triple X and I just, I wanted some of that crazy, harsh HM2 sound and I just, put it all together, didn't even know what the hell I was doing, but turns out I didn't need to know what I was doing in order to make something that sounded somewhat cool. Uh, the client was happy with it, and I think it turned out good. And like I said, for being a beginner, not bad. The most recent thing I put out is my own project uh, called Castle Ultra, check it out. It sounds a little like this. <laughs> Like I said, I got no fancy tips or tricks, but here are some of the plugins that I love using. Now for vocals, I love using this Howard Benson vocals plugin. Um, I feel like anything that I would want to do with vocals, it's already right there. It's very convenient and it has not done me wrong yet. Also, as far as EQ and whatever goes, I'm using this stock Reaper EQ looks like this. I'm also using uh, the stock compressor, looks like this, nothing fancy. Um, I love this plugin right here, the Waves Kramer, I believe it's called Kramer Tape. I love using that on my snare, I love using it on just drums period, I love using it on vocals sometimes. Uh, you could even use it on the overall mix of your song. I love using it on toms. 
Um, I, I, that's, that's definitely a go-to for me. For bass, I use the Joey Sturgis Tones Rex Brown Bass Forge. A lot of people really seem to like the bass sounds I've been getting. Sounds like this. I don't think I'll ever really use anything else. So that's what I use. My speakers that I use to mix are nothing fancy at all. They're those pre-Sonus, I, I think they're called Eries, Air, I don't even know the name. They cost like a hundred bucks brand new. Um, I'm a true believer that you can get good sounds and results out of low budget gear like this as long as you develop your ears. I've listened to tons and tons of my favorite songs albums on these speakers. I purposely sat here and just listened to music and studied what does this sound like? What does what does the low end sound like? That way when I use reference reference tracks, I I what I'm listening to I feel like I have a very clear view of what I'm hearing and what I want my tracks to sound like. Because in the end of the day, I mean, you could have $10,000 speakers and that's great. But in the end of the day, most people are going to listen to your music on something that looks like this. So I, I personally don't think it matters all that much. But hey, what do I know? So in conclusion, I just want to say thank you to Bobby. Thank you to the entire Frightbox Mixcrypt community. Uh, the amount of knowledge that Bobby gives out for free on his YouTube channel alone has helped me uh, in so many ways. It's helped me improve in such a short amount of time. I will forever be grateful to you, Bobby. So thank you. A couple other guys I want to say thank you to. Uh, Scott Elliott from Chernobyl Studios. Dave Otero, who is just awesome. Clay Rangel from Kill Red Records, who sounds like nobody else. Uh, and that's the beauty about this whole thing that we do is that we all have our own set of ears. I don't have to sound like you and you don't have to sound like me. We all have a place. And I love that about about this, about creating music. I love that. Um, so yeah, thank you. And if there's one thing I, I want you to take away from this video, it's that you do not need anything fancy to do something that you are proud of. As long as you're happy with it, as long as your client's happy, as long as your band's happy, nothing else matters. So thank you once again to Bobby. And uh, if you guys want to Check out what I got coming in the future. I got an EP that will be released. Maybe it's released already. I don't know. But just follow me. Check it out. Follow me on my journey. Let me know what you think. Let me hear some of your stuff. And hey, maybe we'll work on something in the future. We'll collaborate on something. So thank you again. I will see you guys down the road. So I would just like to shout out and thank Mike for being on the channel. In my opinion, his story is super inspiring. His results speak for themselves. And again, he's producing metal that sounds organic, natural. It's got that old school feel. And look at the gear that he's using and the space that he's recording in. It's something that most of us can have, which again, I find to be super inspiring and it pumps me up. Also, I will leave a link below to Mike's YouTube channel where you can check out more of his music. Check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. Now, people have been asking, and I want to let you know that I've opened up the doors for this week to the Fright Box Mix Crypt. In the Fright Box Mix Crypt, we mix a brand new song every single month. You get a detailed breakdown of my mix of the song, as well as a full multi-track download of the song so you can mix the song yourself after learning my approach. There are also personalized mix reviews exclusive to members of the Frightbox Mix Crypt where I listen to and critique your song live during our call where you'll have direct access to me and you can ask me questions in real time. Members also have access to our entire Frightbox Mix Crypt library. This library is our entire back catalog of songs, multi-track downloads, tutorials, and live call replays. I also do a live group coaching call at the end of each month where members can hang out with me, ask any questions that they have, and I'm right there live to answer your questions in real time. And you'll also have full access to the Frightbox Mix Crypt community, which is our private community made up of like-minded producers and mixers where we hang out, share each other's work, and help each other out with our productions. If you're interested in becoming a member of the Frightbox Mix Crypt, there's a link below in this video's description. Click it and learn more about the Frightbox Mix Crypt. So I'm curious to know, did you find Mike's story inspiring? Or are you one of those people that just prefers to record out of a bigger studio? spending a bunch of money. Let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinion. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. And until next time, happy mixing.